Jaguar XE Review Our Rating 5 Star The Jaguar XE offers a fine balance between performance, efficiency, and luxury, and was our 2016 Compact Executive Car of the Year. 4. Excellent Handling Balance, Refined Cabin, Low Emissions Against Slightly Cramped Cabin, Smaller Boot than Rivals, Some Lower Quality Trim Make a list of the pros and cons of the Jaguar XE and, frankly, you don't end up thinking it's a 5-star car. But an objective assessment can't get across just how good Jaguar's junior executive saloon feels, subjectively, it's quite brilliant. It's beautiful, comfortable, great to drive and has a certain X factor that the usual German suspects BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class and Audi A4 just don't equal. So it's no wonder that it was named our Compact Executive Car of the Year for the second successive time in 2016. Sure, it's not perfect it can feel cramped front and back, and some of the lower level plastics feel a little cheap but overall it's a fine ownership prospect, with efficient engines making it very cost effective. Our choice. Jaguar XE R Sport 2.0 D180 Auto. The Jaguar XE was the right car at the right time for the British car maker when it was launched in 2015. The small saloon filled a void left by the rather underwhelming X-Type that was axed in 2009, but it shows just how far Jaguar has come in the intervening years, and represents a huge leap for the firm. The XE was brand new from the ground up, so features a new aluminium chassis, and Jaguar's range of Ingenium four-cylinder petrol and diesel engines. The XE is the entry point to the Jaguar range, but it bristles with the Komeni's latest tech. Jaguar has kept things simple with the XE by offering it only as a four-door saloon, although there are a wide range of models to choose from. The range kicks off with the basic SE, then moves up to Prestige, R-Sport, and Portfolio trims, while the current range topper is the XES. Every version comes well equipped enough to feel like a proper compact executive car touchscreen infotainment system, climate control, and parking sensors are all included but prestige models upwards have a true high class feel, with leather upholstery, heated seats, and brushed aluminium in the cabin. Power comes from Jaguar's Ingenium four-cylinder engines, as well as a V6 petrol. The 2.0-liter diesel models feature 163 PS or 180 PS, while the 2.0-liter turbo petrols come with either 200 PS or 240 PS. The latter is only available in high-spec portfolio or R-Sport trims. At the top of the range, the S model features a 340 PS 3.0-liter supercharged V6 sourced from the F-Type. That's the current flagship, although it's likely that a BMW M3 rivaling Jaguar XER or even XERs will join the lineup in the future. The 2.0-liter diesel comes with a 6-speed manual gearbox, or it can be upgraded to the 8-speed auto that's standard across the rest of the range. All XES are rear-wheel drive as standard, although the 178BHP 2.0D also gets the option of Jaguar's intelligent all-wheel drive system. It remains rear-driven most of the time, but can send power to the front axle whenever a loss of traction is detected by the car's electronics. The XE isn't perfect. It does occasionally veer into built down to a price territory in the cabin, particularly the lower-level plastics, and it's missing some of the surprise and delight features of the bigger XF Executive Saloon. You'd probably expect that, in fairness, but the XE cabin is a conservative effort compared to the flamboyancy of Jaguar's other interiors. It's a little cramped too, in all directions there's not a great deal of headroom, rear leg room is restricted, and by volume the boot is the smallest in the junior executive class. Jaguar would argue that these are prices worth paying for the XE's coupe-like design and you might argue that too, because the XE is far from space deficient. Rivals for the Jaguar XE include the BMW 3 Series, Alfa Romeo Giulia, Audi A4, and Mercedes C-Class, while the Lexus is, is an intriguing alternative. You could also consider the Infiniti Q50, 
the aging Volvo S60 and higher spec versions of the Volkswagen Passat. Engines, performance, and drive. 4.7 star. Great to drive yet very comfortable, and despite a narrow engine choice overall there should be something for everyone here. Behind the wheel, the overriding characteristic of the Jaguar XE is the way it feels dynamic yet comfortable at the same time a difficult trick to pull off. Jaguar has managed it by using a relatively lightweight aluminium chassis and a sophisticated multi-link suspension setup that smothers the bumps while keeping the wheels firmly in contact with the road, so there's lots of feel. Point the XE's nose through a series of corners, and it's clear it can't quite match a BMW 3 Series for driver involvement, but it's ahead of the Alfa Giulia. The Jag steering is extremely fast and precise, and there's plenty of grip, too. Dynamic mode alters the steering weighting, throttle response and the auto's shift pattern, plus it turns the dials a sporty red. As you'd expect, the XE is a refined and comfortable cruiser, with the sport suspension quickly losing its low-speed stiffness and soaking up bumps and undulations well. The rear-wheel drive chassis always seems firmly planted but there's a definite sense of the car being pushed from the back and steered from the front great balance, in other words. It makes the XE feel that bit more special when you up the pace. In late 2015 an intelligent all-wheel drive version of the XE was launched, trading in some of the unlimited balance for extra grip and security. It certainly feels very sure-footed, and it builds confidence in adverse conditions, but it's mainly for markets where it snows frequently, unlike the UK. For most over here the reduced economy means it isn't necessary, the standard car doesn't exactly lack grip, and a good set of winter tires will sew a similar job. Either way, the XE's dynamic prowess becomes more significant the further up the engine range you go, with the two most powerful petrol engines the 237 bhp version of the 2.0 liter and the 335 bhp supercharged V6 veering into high performance territory to a greater or lesser extent. However, most XE buyers will go diesel, for running costs reasons. And it must be said that the lower powered of those engines the 99G slash KM161 BHP 2.0 liter lacks punch. It never quite feels as fast as a Jaguar should and it's actually a little noisier than you'd want it to be too a little harsh around town, although it's better at speed. Unlike rivals from Mercedes and BMW, Jaguar doesn't offer a six-cylinder diesel XE, which is a silky smooth power plant in the bigger XF. Nonetheless, our preferred drivetrain the 178 bhp diesel with an automatic gearbox is suitably refined for an executive car. That little bit of extra power, and torque, means you don't have to work the engine as hard for overtaking, while the gearbox is as smooth as you like. There are two gearboxes for the XE, a 6-speed manual and an 8-speed automatic, though the manual is only available with the diesels. It's a pleasant gearbox, light of shift action yet precise, but to be honest it doesn't really suit the nature of the car, a Jaguar feels like it should be powered by an automatic gearbox. That's for two reasons, firstly the 8-speed automatic is very good indeed, as it has smooth shifts in full auto mode and quick changes when you pull on the steering wheel paddles. It's not quite as effective as a BMW's gearbox, but it's more responsive than the Alpha similar 8-speed transmission. The convenience enhances the XE's relaxing properties, yet the auto is snappy enough to suit a more aggressive driving style. But secondly, the rotary gear selector dial that rises from the center console is the main bit of cabin theater taken from the bigger XF saloon, and it starts any drive off with something a little bit special. This sounds trivial but it really makes a difference that anyone choosing a manual XE misses out on. All XE models ride with smoothness and refinement, whether on 17-inch standard wheels or 18-19-inch R Sport ones it's firm but forgiving, and feels exactly how you'd want a small sporting Jaguar saloon to feel. The electric power steering is quick to react and offers plenty of feel when away from the slightly numb straight-ahead position. Throttle response is good, too, 
especially if you sharpen things up with a configurable dynamic system that allows the driver to select sharper throttle reactions and firmer suspension settings. Engines There are three available engines for the XE, but five outputs. Of those, the vast majority of sales will go to the Ingenium 2.0 liter diesel engine, available with 161 bhp or 178 bhp. The alternative 2.0 liter four cylinder turbo petrol engine has either 197 bhp or 237 bhp. Finally, the high performance S model is powered by a 3.0 liter V6 supercharged petrol engine putting out 335 bhp and giving the XE a 5.1 second 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint. The headline grabbing 99G slash KM car is the 161 bhp 2.0 liter diesel equipped with a 6 speed manual gearbox. On paper it looks the business endowing the XE with a swift 8.4 second 0 to 62 miles per hour time, with its 380 Nm maximum torque coming at just 1,750 rpm. However, it's a little noisy and never feels as quick as that time suggests. You'll often find yourself shifting gears at lower speeds to get the engine into its narrow power band. It's generally not befitting of an executive car especially if you've plumped for that engine slash gearbox combo in a more expensive R-Sport or portfolio specification. It's much better to go for the 178 bhp unit with an 8-speed automatic. It's the same basic engine, but it has significantly more torque, 430 Nm also at 1,750 rpm, so it has noticeably more shove. Jaguar's automatic is one of the smoothest in the class too, as mentioned earlier. Yet while the 2.0 liter is smooth and responsive, the XE can't match its rivals at the track. It was over a second slower than a 320D and Alpha Julia we tested over 0 to 60 miles per hour. The XE was far closer during our in-gear tests, where the Jag was able to call on its muscular 430Nm torque output. Head out on the road, however, and the differences between the three are barely detectable all deliver effortless mid-range punch, although the Jaguar and BMW slightly shorter top gears mean they feel more alert at high speeds. The four-cylinder petrol engine, a 2.0 liter unit with 197 bhp or 237 bhp, lacks character compared to the six-cylinder engines offered by BMW and Mercedes but it does have the sort of top-end pace and smoothness that the diesels do not, so if you're less bothered about running costs and more concerned by getting the most refined XE experience possible, it's the one to go for. The 237 BHP1 especially feels quite rapid both in a straight line and through the corners. The flagship XE, at the moment, is the 3.0 liter supercharged V6 in the S and its stats are remarkable, 155 miles per hour and 0 to 62 miles per hour in 5.1 seconds. You'll also draw a smile from the knowledge that it's an engine also found in the F-Type sports car. The noise it makes here is more muted than in the snarling Jaguar coupe, but it's still a visceral roar, and really gives the XE that extra dimension a proper Jaguar engine. That said, it's ultimately not quite as kick you in the gut rapid as you might expect. MPG, CO2 and running costs. 4.2 star. The headline grabbing 99G slash KM car isn't the best to drive, but overall the XE is a very cost-effective executive saloon to buy and run. Jaguar developed the XE's 2.0 liter diesel engine from scratch and builds it in a purpose-made factory in the UK. While it doesn't set the world alight performance-wise, it's a very clean unit. Available in two power guises, the lower 161 bhp version puts the XE into VED band A with a manual gearbox, while the 178 bhp unit with a manual is in band B with 109 GKM that's remarkable for what is a strongly performing executive saloon. Our favorite XE, though, is the 178 bhp diesel with Jaguar's 8-speed automatic gearbox. It emits just 111 G slash KM CO2 which sadly pushes it into band C, but you're still looking at just 30 pounds per year in VED less than half a tank of fuel. Even the all-wheel drive version, 
introduced with a model update in late 2015, emits just 123G slash KM. That all means you're looking at 74.3 mpg at the best end of the diesel scale and 60.1 mpg at the other, which means in any event you'll comfortably exceed 5.0 mpg in daily driving and 6.0 mpg in the lower powered manual. It also means that the benefit in kind, big, tax you'll outlay on the XE will be relatively small, a combination of reasonable list prices across the board and low CO2 emissions, the big rating of the 161 BHP manual is just 15%. It is worth noting, however, that the Jaguar's two main rivals the BMW 3 Series and the Mercedes C-Class have much larger engine ranges and therefore lower entry prices. The base price for a BMW 318i is some £2,000 lower than the cheapest XE, for example. In general the XE doesn't have the price advantage over rivals that some Jaguars have had, but all models tend to be slightly better equipped than rivals like for like. In such a hugely competitive sector, we'd expect maintenance costs for the Jaguar to be on PAR with rivals, too. So, as ever the question of value is more complicated than asking which is cheapest, but still, low running costs can't be claimed for the petrol versions of the XE. At its worst, the supercharged 3.0-liter V6 XE returns 34.9 mpg combined with a gas-guzzling 194g slash kmco2. Saying that, even the entry-level XE, with an auto and a 198bhp 2.0-liter petrol engine, returns just 37.7 mpg on the combined cycle which means getting 3.0 mpg in real life will be doing well. The more powerful 237 BHP offers no trade-off for the increased power output, though, so if your budget allows then we'd stretch to the fast car. Insurance Groups Insurance groups start at 24 for the 161 BHP diesel manual, rising to 35 for the supercharged S, putting the XE on PAR with its rivals. A BMW 318D, for example, is also in Group 24, while a BMW 335i is in group 38. Every XE comes with remote central locking, an alarm and an engine immobilizer, as you'd expect, but the premium cost of parts and labor for accident repairs means insurance costs are suitably premium also. Depreciation The XE is such a new model that residuals are unproven and those quoted for the model are likely to take a small hit given how popular the saloon is already proving to be. However, after 3 years and 30,000 miles Jaguar expects a 45% residual value, which is in keeping with rivals. As usual, it's important to spec your car wisely in order to protect its value, which in this segment means desirable specification like our sport, an automatic gearbox, leather interior, and muted paint shades not a base spec diesel on small wheels in flat red and with cloth seats, in other words. Jaguar has stated an aim to protect residuals by not discounting the car heavily. Interior, Design, and Technology 4.3 Star With smart looks inside and out, and one of the best multimedia systems out there the XE is designed for the cutting-edge driver. The Jaguar XE may look conservative in pictures, partly owing to a similarity to the bigger Jaguar XF, but on the road it has real presence, Jaguar has developed a strong, coherent look for all its models, with the XE, XF, XJ, F-Type and F-Pace all sharing traits. Those traits are wide, slim headlights, an upright grille and a low, sleek bonnet. The J-Blade daytime running LEDs in the headlights accentuate the car's width at the front, while the rear LEDs do the same job at the back. The low roofline gives the car a coupe-like stance, although this is to the detriment of headroom in the cabin a problem shared with Jaguar's biggest saloon, the XJ, in fact. Our sport and range topping S variants add beefier front and rear bumpers as well as larger alloy wheels, while there's more chrome exterior trim in portfolio models, to give it a more understated, classy appearance. But it's the sporty stuff that really suits the XE most, with the more aggressive styling amplifying its proportions. The inside is simple yet stylish, 
with a wraparound fascia similar to the XJ's, which makes the car feel welcoming inside. That said, there's evidence of cost cutting in the cabin, most notably the lower level plastics, which aren't soft touch, and the general plainness of the design. Plainness means intuitiveness here too, however, so while you'll miss out on the fun of fathoming out what all the buttons do as per a DS5, say you'll instantly know where everything is and what it does. Again, this adds to a sense of class from a cabin that will, for the same reason, probably age very well. Jaguar XE models start out with the entry-level SE, and move up through to Prestige, R-Sport, and Portfolio Specs. The 237BHP 2.0-liter turbo petrol engine is only available in higher-spec R-Sport and Portfolio trims, and the range-topping V6 comes only in bespoke XES trim level. All XE models come with touchscreen navigation, cruise control, climate control, 17-inch alloys, rear parking sensors, Bluetooth, and DAB radio as standard. Move up to Prestige and you'll add leather upholstery, a rear armrest, heated front seats and aluminium trim. Our sport specification changes the look quite dramatically, with 18-inch alloys, perforated leather sports seats, a body kit, lowered sports suspension and a black radiator grille. Portfolio, on the other hand, comes with an improved stereo, more luxurious leather chairs and a more classic Jaguar-style chrome grille. Sat NAV, stereo and infotainment. All versions of the XE get Jaguar's in-control touch system. It features an 8-inch touch screen, 3D Sat NAV and Bluetooth connection for hands-free phone use and music streaming. You can also use the system to access other functions, such as the climate control and advanced trip computer. The graphics lack the crispness of BMW's iDrive setup, but they are easy to use, and the screen is responsive. It's a straightforward setup to operate, and hooking up your smartphone takes less than a minute. You can upgrade to the Pro setup for around £1,125. The most obvious difference is the larger 10.2-inch screen and absence of shortcut buttons. However, the ability to use pinch and swipe gestures makes using the screen a doddle. A 10GB hard drive, enhanced NAV, and 380W Meridian sound system are also included. At Jaguar's Connect Pro package and you'll benefit from online services, Google Street View, real-time traffic info and social media app connections. The system was upgraded with the late 2015 model update, which Jaguar called the 2017 model year, confusingly, bringing a 10.2-inch screen with more sensitive touch functionality, quicker response and, by virtue of its size, a clearer display. It includes features like Apple CarPlay, a Wi-Fi hotspot and compatibility with an Apple Watch, and is one of the more pleasant systems to use on the market, it's certainly ahead of Mercedes and Lexus in this regard. Practicality, comfort, and boot space. 3.5 star. Great ride quality is tempered by a cabin that lacks space compared to rivals, and the boot has a similar issue. If the XC has an Achilles heel, then it's practicality. It has larger external dimensions than a BMW 3 Series, but the Jaguar is no bigger inside, and it trails the Alfa Romeo Giulia in terms of rear seat space. The XC gets comfort spot on when it comes to ride quality, though. Regardless of wheel and tire choice, it levels out most road surfaces in the spirit of a more expensive, more luxurious car. This is one of its most alluring qualities. The driving position is pretty spot on too, with plenty of adjustment the wheel comes back some distance, and the chair is set low, again giving the XE the feel of a coupe. Taller drivers might find the roof lining a little too close for comfort, but it should accommodate all but the very tallest. The chairs themselves are soft and comfortable too, even the sportier, more figure-hugging ones in our sport and S cars. The cabin isn't perfect, though. The center console does feel wider than those of rivals, and hefty A-pillars create a bit of a blind spot, especially if you sit as low as possible in the car. And as usual, 
The saloon format means that the standard boot space is your lot. There's no folding the rear seats down for additional loading space. Technically, only the BMW 3 Series GT does that in this segment, and as yet there's no XE estate. There is a decent amount of storage in the cabin though, with good sized door pockets and nets for rear passengers. The central storage bin is sizable too, as is the glove compartment. Size The XE of course conforms to the conventional three box shape of the executive saloon segment, but it's actually a little longer and wider than the BMW 3 Series, while also being lower. The last of those properties explains the very slight headroom deficiency, and the coupe-like profile, although Jaguar could have perhaps squeezed a little more legroom and boot space from the cabin. In terms of maneuverability the XE is fine, because despite the low seating position it's easy to judge the corners thanks to its short overhangs and decent visibility. Legroom, headroom and passenger space. The XE is a lot more fun when you're sitting up front generally. That wide center console hides a thick transmission tunnel, which is most obvious in the back. It'll make things uncomfortable for a third rear passenger in the middle, and amplifies the XE's main problem cramped rear seats. You'd expect a car of this length, and in this class, to have more space behind the front seats. Anyone over 6 foot might find their fancy haircut being flattened by the XE's roof lining. The doors open nice and wide at the front and back, making getting in and out easy, but that transmission tunnel means anyone sitting in the middle rear seat will have their knees apart and feet fighting for space with those of passengers sitting in the outer chairs. Boot It's the Jaguar's boot that's the real letdown, with its awkwardly shaped load area and measly capacity of 455 liters, which is 25 liters down on the Alpha Giulia. BMW 3 Series, Merc C-Class, and Lexus is. That reduces by a further 5 liters if you specify a space saver spare wheel in place of the standard tire repair kit. Pragmatically, you might struggle to squeeze two larger golf bags side by side into the boot, should you be the sort of Jaguar driver who conforms to that particular cliché. Reliability and Safety 4.2 Star 5 stars from Euro NCAP and plenty of standard safety features make the XE safe, though reliability is currently unproven. Jaguar has a fine reputation for reliability these days, coming an excellent second in the manufacturer rankings of OutDriver Power Survey in 2014 and 2015. Owners love their Jaguars, it seems. That said, Jaguar's results tend to be do well more because drivers love their performance and handling rather than reliability the XJ, for example, which finished 8th overall in 2015, came a poor 124th for reliability. But Jaguar's dealers are on top of their game when it comes to customer service, standard of workmanship and general attitude. They're not the cheapest, as you'd expect but Jaguar owners are generally far more satisfied with the dealership experience than BMW or Mercedes owners are. With all that in mind it's difficult to predict how the XE, a new model with a brand new chassis and diesel engine, will fare but we're not hearing of any major reliability concerns. On the safety front there's no need to worry, with the car achieving an excellent result in its Euro NCAP crash test in 2015. Its 92%er adult occupant rating Indiana Particular is brilliant, with six airbags, traction control, stability control, and ISO fix for child seats all standard. More impressively, lane departure warning is standard fit too, as is emergency low-speed automatic braking a system that applies the brakes to mitigate a crash if it detects one is imminent. Those two very useful pieces of safety technology are often optional with other cars, so it's good to see them included as standard. Warranty The Jaguar XE comes with a three-year, unlimited mileage warranty, meaning business buyers looking to do big mileages can have peace of mind. It's fairly standard aside from the mileage to restriction, covering any mechanical or electrical parts that fail outside of what could be considered normal wear and tear. Jaguar offers a 12-month extended warranty too, 
also covering unlimited mileage and including car hire and Europe-wide coverage. Servicing As mentioned earlier, Jaguar's dealer network has gained an exceptional reputation, partly owing to the work of the service departments, whose work is generally outstanding and comprehensively explained to customers. And to mitigate the cost, Jaguar offers fixed-price service plans, separated by petrol or diesel models. A diesel XE can have its servicing covered for 5 years or 50,000 miles for £475, or £659 for a high mileage plan, up to 75,000 miles. Petrol engines are a little more expensive pro rata, costing £475 for a 3 year 30, 000 mile policy on a 2.0 litre engine, or £659 for a 3 year 48,000 mile plan on a 3.0 litre. Usefully, the plans also cover costs up to £750 for repair and replacement of parts needed to pass the 4th and 5th year MOT tests.